So, Greg, yeah. we're coming up today on topic two of right. the Kind of Funny Games cast. The supersized GDC special. Exactly. You, you guys are probably familiar with how this is going by now. Uh, topic two is... Mike Biffle. The one yes. and only Mike Biffle. Of course, made Thomas was alone, found enormous success, put out volume. It came to some platform, the PlayStation 4 and stuff, nobody cared about it. Then it came to Vita. Everyone went wild for it. And then... To make it even crazier for Mike Biffle. He's taking it to the next dimension. He and yeah, he is. Wow, good one. He announced mm-hmm. that, yeah, the PlayStation Vita version, Volume Coda, is coming as well and is free add-on to regular volume. So we brought him in, of course, during GDC to talk to him about Volume Coda and, of course, Volume getting a little physical packaging. That's exciting. We it had is. our best talk to him about it, Colin Moriarty and Nick Scarpino. What they have So to we had our best talk to him and Nick. Yeah. How's uh how's GDC <laughs> treating you? I held his hand wrong. Um, really good. It's a weird GDC. Um, usually a GDC, I'm here like you know uh, demoing, showing the games to press. Obviously, as volumes out, um, we're not doing that this year. And the uh, volume coder wasn't quite where I wanted it frame rate wise specifically because VR obviously you want that great frame rate. Right, so of we, we, we're holding back uh, for now, but that will be at future events. Um, so it's this weird situation where we're just, you know, we're in and out of meetings. This is literally the only like thing I'm doing that isn't a meeting or a party this whole this whole week. So it's it's really nice actually to not like be trying to convince a publisher that I'm good. Uh, we didn't tell you, but we actually brought a disco ball in. We're going to drink later. So this is actually this a party. This is actually a party. It's a party of three. Kevin's not. It's invited. a party getting started. That's what mm. it is. Yeah, no, it's cool. So yeah, it's been. Um, so my voice obviously is like croaky because I went to I tried I, tr- I I did three parties last night, which was optimistic <laughs> to say the least yes. i'm not really a party guy so yeah, i was just either. like uh but it was it was fun and uh i got to see a load of uh a load of buddies so it's nice um oh sorry no no ahead. please please please. i've already i've asked all the questions so far so i was okay. going to ask him about the, about which parties he went to last night because we did not to? i did not go to any party I, last night i fell asleep like an elder at eight o'clock, <laughs> See, I've been doing that. Elder the rest Nick of the fell week. asleep. I, I did that. I've done that like two nights in a row. And last night, I was like, "No, I'm going to some damn parties." So last night was a uh, humble bundle party, uh, which was really cool. Had loads of like indie games playable and stuff. So drinking and looking at stuff. Uh, then the Sony party, which was awesome. Yeah. Um, they always throw really cool parties, uh, which was where just kind of. I was just wandering around, meeting, basically seeing all the indies, and then the IGF finished, so all of the guys who'd won came along, and we were all chatting. It was a lovely evening. Mm. Um, and then I went to Epic. Uh, all of it sounds horrible. So no, no, those were cool. And the, what I liked about the so so the humble pie was cool because it was quite quiet and like it wasn't very loud music. It was just people playing video games. It felt cool. Right. Uh, Sony one there was like an outdoors area that was quite quiet, which suited me just fine. Kind of stood there with my coke, having a chat. Coca Cola. Um, <laughs> uh, Important distinction. On yeah, 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 yeah. The problem is It'd be hilarious if you're just holding a mirror the entire time. This like, is it. There's no flat surfaces outside. Didn't leave me a Coca <laughs> um, And then, uh, and then I went to the epic party, which was just like loud and bright lights and just terrifying. That one was. That one was like. That was a big. That was like. I've not been clubbing since I was like. 18 like I, I did all that when I was very young and now I'm just too old for that stuff. No, I feel the same way. Yeah. Um, all right. So we have first of all the big announcement in case you're just tuning in volume coming boxed limited run. Yes, we've on, on the Vita on the Vita. We're just doing the Vita version for now. We're gonna see how that goes and, and who knows but uh, but yeah, and that's will you'll get so you actually do get like the the little the little disc for the Vita. It's a it's a proper box release. Well, I'm glad you're able to enjoy yourself for uh, GDC, not having to show the game. Like you know, like, like it's little- nice. Like you're not having the same conversation every time. Right. That's the thing, right? Like I, I, I get it. Like I'm, you know, press have the hardest time at these events because they are running from room to room. I get to sit. Who am I to moan about sitting in a room showing off for like four days, right? But like the one thing that's tiring is like if you're showing a game, you have like these are the things I need to make sure I show. This is this is the stuff that like. I have to get through and you just have that same conversation over and over. It's very tiring. Whereas with this, like we're having meetings with platform holders, publishers, other devs that we're helping, other devs that are helping us. And it's just a really nice flow of different conversations and getting to see some cool like tech and secret things as well. So that's good. That's awesome. Um, I noticed that, you, you know, because you don't have to show the game off the young Japanese boy that was assisting you last, last so year. So he's apparently like something's going on with him. He's really busy. Yeah. I guess there's like, I, I don't know. He got a job. I forget where, um, like this little Japanese company and he's doing this. It's like glasses or so. I don't know. It's right. Yeah. Special glasses. The young Japanese boy working on special but glasses. Yeah, I'll get, I'll get him on another day. I'll get him on another day. 
And the other thing is, I don't have anything to demo. So what would he do? Right. He would just. He would just. He would he's just. Not, he's not got many interesting things to talk about, really. So it's, yeah. it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's still one of my favorite moments of GDC last year. Was, that was so was much Shuhei fun. Just I assumed up. you were talking about Shuhei, yeah. but I didn't want but to he just, but he just, For people that didn't see it, he just showed up. Like, so, what he it? DM, so he DM'd me like that morning on Twitter just saying, and had we met at that point? I feel like we'd had dinner like a while before. Um, and he just DM'd me going, hey, I saw you're on Kind of Funny. And I'm not got anything on this morning. Do you want me to come and demo your game with you? And it was just like, and we met like, uh, met on a corner outside just before coming in. It's just like, that's Shuhei Yoshida. Just, and, and then he just totally he played along. I, I think I'd met him like in a big thing with lots of people, but like, you know, we got to hang out and stuff and we've, we've hung out since <laughs> quite a few times. Nice. He's lovely. But like, no, he was just, uh, he was just great. And he totally, as we were walking in, like, I was like, it would be really funny if like we pretended we didn't know who you were. And he's like, that's really good. So we actually, I think we managed to last for, I think Greg messed it up if I remember right. Like, I feel like he just kind of was like, uh, he just like, he said shoe by mistake, but we managed to keep this thing going for a while, but none of us knew who this guy was. It's just, it's great. It's really fun. Yeah. He was just playing the game and do, wasn't there for any Sony related business at all. And then just left. Uh, it was awesome. It also took fifty dollars from you as well, I think. Which he then proceeded to go around the rest of GDC, like photographing himself, holding the fifty dollars, and <laughs> tweeting at me. <laughs> so it's cool. No, I I love Shu. I've uh, I've enjoyed I've enjoyed many an evening with Shu since. He's a he's a cool guy, and uh, he's just he has a he has a sense of fun, which is great. And obviously, he should right in the industry yeah. he works. But like, it's real. Like, it's real when he is. He loves what he does. He loves uh, the medium. And I just, yeah, he's great. He's uh, he's my kind of people. So, uh, I'm kind of curious. I was wondering this with volume because volume yeah. you you tweeted out a while ago um, that. You know, volume obviously exceeding the sales of Thomas was alone pretty significantly. Mm -hmm. Does volume does a high tide raise all boat for you, or does a high tide raise all boats for your games in terms of like has have you looked back at Thomas was alone sales to see that those have yeah have yeah, spiked it, at all? It, it does, and it's incredibly cool. Like it's it's this thing that when because because it was a surprise to me, and then I've talked to like publishers about this, and they're like, yeah, catalog, that's how it works. You know, you bring out the new game, the old game does better. But it was a surprise to me, and yeah, no. So Thomas was alone continues to do really well. Um, and we're still finding weird opportunities to do cool stuff with Thomas was alone. We've, we've done some some weird different bundles and sales and things recently, just experimenting with it. Um, but yeah, people people go back because we find people. There's a lot of people um, who like you know who have played Volume who've never played Thomas was alone. So they finish that and hopefully they like it and they're like, I want to try something else by this guy and see what see what's gone before. So uh, so yeah, so it's Thomas was alone continues just to do really nicely and and that's again like. I, my job is to make video. <laughs> my job is to make video games, and that's amazing. And I still like, still like the idea that like I make stuff and people bother to play it, and then because they play it, I get to keep making more stuff. It's just mind blowing to me. So I'm incredibly grateful. Every copy of Thomas Was Alone I sell like literally lets me keep making games, and same with Volume now. So it's it's really cool. Awesome. Um, now I know Coda is like it kind of like your focus now. Um, <laughs> But I did respect the, the jump from Thomas Was Alone to Volume in terms of they're just totally different games. I mean, it's a totally mm -hmm. different style. Uh, you made basically uh, like a kind of a, a, a puzzler and then you made kind of like a stealth, like a Metal Gear Solid VR mm -hmm. kind of game, which I think and I think Volume is, is fantastic. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's great. Again, on Vita, that's I waited for it on Vita. Um, I, it's working really well with those short play sessions, I think. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, and there's a nice little story in there and all, you know, mm -hmm. like there's a lot to find. Um, but like, where's your head at in terms of like, once you're past all this and once VR, I know this is like in your focus until the end of the year, sure. maybe beyond that, but do you have any ideas for like, what's next? Is it a totally yeah. radically different idea again? I mean, the problem is we have too many ideas. I mean, that's the big challenge is that, you know, because of, because we've released two games now and they've been well received and that like, there's lots of opportunity for us to do sort of whatever we want next, which I'm finding incredibly difficult, like speaking completely candidly, because uh, it, it just opens so many doors and it's scary and weird because so I, I always have to try to explain this to people like Thomas was alone was like the reason it's rectangle was I literally was making it my evenings and weekends I had no time no resources no money I just had to like make something um, and then that came out and that did okay and you know Thomas took a while to kind of build and, and do stuff so volume was very much okay I have like a year's salary in my bank account I can make something a bit bigger maybe but like I have to be you know Oh, you know, maybe stealth, but like more puzzly stealth. That I can get that done in a year. Obviously, it ended up taking three years. Um, <laughs> but like, but but like at every turn, it's always been that constraint and kind of thing. And now that we don't have the constraint, that's that's tough. So the honest answer is, I have like four or five ideas, and we're just trying. That's a big part of GDC is just talking about those ideas with people and seeing 
which things people react well to. Um, I've had one person laugh in my face at one of the ideas. So that might not be the next game. <laughs> but, um, Unless it's a comedy game, in which case. <laughs> oh, hey, it. there you go. You crushed it. So it's cool. And we're just kind of, so we're, we're going through that process. We're also in the process of kind of structuring everything better. Um, Alexander, uh, my new business partner, is kind of uh, really like organizing everything and like building a business, which was never something I did because I make video games and I just wasn't thinking in that way. Um, and I will now plug, actually, we're doing a podcast which we're focusing on that stuff because we notice there's a lot of games podcasts about game development, but they're all kind of about the fun stuff and the kind of the game creation right. stuff. So we have a the Mythal Games podcast, uh, uh, which is like, it's all on iTunes and YouTube and stuff. And that is that is really focused on like, like literally we did, we, the, the most recent episode we did, I uploaded was literally an hour interview with our lawyer. Like basically just like talking about like fair use <laughs> and what that is right. and how legally that all works. Just the really kind of the nerdy business side of stuff. Mm -hmm. We talk about game dev and, and the fun stuff as well, but like it, it's been really fun kind of exploring that and talking about that. So we're trying to organize, be more professional and then just work out which of those cool ideas to do. Um, I, I assume you're attracting attention and maybe even before volume from publishers, right? I mean, do, do you want to work with anyone or do you kind of want to remain independent and I mean, kind of chart your own course? It's, I, it's, a, it's a tough one because, yeah, I mean, that's the thing is you is without trying to be, you know, too boastful, like we've shipped two solid games and that gets certain people's attentions and you start to be attractive to those people. So it, we're having the conversations and we're seeing, um, I think for me, it's like, it has to be something that it has to be something that we would make on our own as well. Like, I don't want it to be something that's, um, that we feel like we're doing because we have to, because I mean, you the players can tell, you know, I've worked on those kind of games in the past and players, not my independent ones, but like I've worked on those games, you players know, players know, like if you're faking it, right. They know if you're not into the thing you're making. Um, so I don't ever want to do that kind of project, but yeah, we're, we're talking to everyone at the moment because there are these opportunities, but. We'll see, man. Um, but it will always be something that I want to make. It will always be something that I would have made on my own anyway. It's just nice to have the help, you know? Yeah, I mean, is, is the perfect middle ground for you kind of the situation you have with Sony where it was with volume, where it was like it's coming to PS4 and Vita first mm -hmm. um, on, on, in the console space and then... I mean, is that kind of like the perfect middle ground to give you like kind yeah, of I mean, a little bit of a voice and a little bit of a, a stage? But and they helped us, yeah. you know. And and Sony have been just the most, you know. I, I, I know I'm wrong, kind of funny. So uh, this might sound uh, empty, but it's true. Like Sony have been like just amazing partners and collaborators on the stuff that people see, you know. In terms of like, yes, got to go out on stage, which like for me is just mind blowing again. Um, and like you know, support with marketing and all that stuff. But then in private as well, like having you know. Uh, chats, showing them stuff, you know, working on them with uh, with Coda, the VR expansion, like just like getting like the guys making PlayStation VR to play the game and find problems or find stuff that works. Right. And we found these weird situations where like there's stuff that's in Coda, which is now being put into other VR games because it's a nice solution. And we're also fixing loads of things in Coda, which other developers have solved better. So it's like this whole kind of collaborative and VR in general is super collaborative, but Sony have been awesome at kind of sharing that information around and, and making sure that all of us are producing really cool stuff. Well, can you tell us a little bit, like, what is the nature of Coda going to be? Like, I, I don't know how much you've talked about it, but I mean, okay. can, you can you tell us a little bit about it without obviously being able to show it? Yeah, so we're not showing it. Um, I don't want to, like, over <laughs> overstate it. So it's the best game ever. No. Um, <laughs> it's like, although you, plant, you plant an acorn and it grows into a tree and, in VR. Um, no, it's so it's um, it's still top down. It's still um, it's still you're viewing kind of an isometric uh, space. Uh, so if you've played volume, you know, it's kind of that, like I say, like Mel Gear Solid VR kind of top down camera. Um, but it takes place in this kind of cool VR environment. You're sat with a controller or stood with a controller and it's a hologram in front of you of the level. You can make the level bigger in, in terms of like in the real world, you can make it bigger, smaller, rotate it. So it's comfortable and you can, and to be honest, like just for fun, right? So like you can be playing it on like a, and it, it's like the size of like a, like a, like travel chess kind of thing. And that's kind of cool, like really close to your face or you can like scale up. So like GI Joe's kind of walking around and you can poke your head into it and kind of look around. It's a really, cool. it's a really, it's, it's, you know, it's taking that. Sounds twisted. It is, it is weird and cool <laughs> and it's a fun toy. I, I remember when we were talking like very early on, like just kind of working out the high level design of it. We were like, um, we, I, I always use the reference of like, I want people to be able to like play with the window of a car, like, you know, when, when you're a kid and you're like just fiddling with the window and like yeah. making it go up and Pissing down. Off your grandma. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm like, when I get VR for the first time, I want games that let me kind of fiddle and just like 
do things and be silly with it and come up, you know, work out ways of, uh, of, of, of playing the game their way. And this was the kind of solution of like, let's let them like, cause we had like versions where like it auto did its thing and it was all dynamic and blah, blah. But it's like, no, people want to fiddle with the windows. They want to kind of mess around with stuff. Um, so this feels like a good way of taking the volume gameplay we have and kind of putting it into a VR context and then doing like, you know, new VO. It continues the story with some new characters. It's, it's cool. So it's it's safe to I mean you're kind of experimenting with VR I think as everyone is I, I don't sure. know no one knows what, what it's gonna what the future is gonna hold but my assumption is that you're kind of a believer in the potential of it because I I talked to a lot of developers that you know that actually shocked me we had Steve Gaynor on uh, the kind of funny Gamescast or maybe it was Game Over Gregory show I don't know which one Gamecast. Gamescast and uh, by he, the way he has like he is looking great I saw him last, I was chatting to him last night like he is like he's groomed oh right? yeah he's he very landscaped. handsome very he's handsome great uh, you and, look great Steve you look great and I was shocked like he was the one where I was like I know he's going to be a believer in VR but he mm. was actually like I don't really care and I was like because his games are like I was like oh Tacoma in mm -hmm. VR would be awesome not, not that it's coming to Xbox One first but but assume it would come to every, other things eventually so are, what are you finding with your dev friends like are you finding like a lot of support or kind of a lot of skepticism I think it's like well I think it's like anything it's like and it's like anything with, like down the pub with your mates right like there's people who think like this is awful it's rubbish it doesn't count and, and like other people who are like this is the future of everything and I think I fall kind of in the middle personally um, but I think there's a lot of support out there there's a lot of people I mean there's a lot of people who see it as a really cool toy to play with and something interesting to me I'm a believer in that I think it's I think it's badass. I think you put it on and it just feels great and it's fresh and its own thing. Um, but, you know, I also like, we've not sold one yet. So like there's, there's a lot of unknowns on a business yep. level. So I always have to kind of balance those two parts of my brain. But like, you no, know, for me, I think VR is magical. I have all the headsets and stuff and I play with them way too much. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, it's, it's super cool. It's, it, it, it's something that I, the, the biggest challenge I think it has is explaining that coolness because I think if you look at a trailer, you're like, okay, I get it. it's a first person game. Okay, I've played those. I get this. I get the, but the um, but f but like conveying to people like these are gonna have to be in like shopping malls and you have to play them around your friends' houses and like those first VR experiences. Like no one's played one, so it's a uh, that's gonna be a tricky problem. But no, I I would love to make games in VR forever and ever. But we'll see how that works. And also, it's worth saying that there are games that don't suit VR. There are there are experiences that I want to make that. I mean, you know some of the stuff we're talking about where it's like okay that i can see in vr but that would be awful that would be <laughs> like right. people would die um how about you guys like where are you both at uh i i'm a i'm a firm believer in it i, right. I think it um i've said it many times so i'm sorry for our audience but i feel like it's 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 religious you know my, greg's not right greg Gr is more on the fence yeah greg greg likes it but yeah he's more more on the fence mm. and i don't know how you feel feel about it. i'm a late adopter to everything so right. I, mean, I, I i just am i i you know for me, I, I'm 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 the the most casual gamer in all of, in all of our group, obviously by far, by by a huge margin. So for me to actually rectify putting that on at night would just be, uh, it's just too far of a stretch for me. I can, and I, really, I can totally it, understand. It's like everything else that really just depends on what the experience is going to be. What what's the game that's going to sell it for me? What what what's going to be that mm. addictive thing that I have to have? But I mean, it has the capacity to be as impactful to the to the industry as like say a dual analog, analog stick controller, mm -hmm. right? Like it really does if the experience is there. I think the price is gonna really help with that. Like it, it is a, it's pl it's placed at that console level. Yeah. And especially for early adopters. Like if you're, if you're someone who like me went out and bought a PS4 on launch day, then you might be ready for like another big hardware mm -hmm. investment. And I think it kind of, that scale makes sense. I think, I think the price for me, like that's, I think that's the perfect price for it from a, like a, obviously free would be amazing but like <laughs> in terms of reality like i think it's definitely it, it suits what the what the what the device is and it's yeah they've i think they've said it's it's profitable right like it's yeah they uh, did so say that they like which i didn't know until yesterday that yeah. they said that yeah which so is that is amazing like, yeah. that, that unit price will be profitable for them that's what they said yeah wow. which, is, which is amazing that's what you want yeah, we're, um, we're 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 wrapping it up. We're wrapping it up. Kevin, we Thanks. got you. We got uh, you Kevin. All right, so let's wrap let's wrap things up by saying, all right, Thomas was alone on everything. You can yep. buy that's on pretty much every console and PC. And <laughs> too, handheld. too many, if anything. Right? Uh, volumes on PS4, PC, and Vita, right? That's correct. And yep. uh, are you have any Xbox One plans? I guess that will come. We'll talk about that later. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, Coda will Coda's be PS coming up, and uh, that's PSVR only, or is that Oculus as well? Uh, that's PSVR only. Okay. Um, and then we have our podcast, which I already mentioned. Uh, we have the limited run games. You should go to the website and get on the mailing list. You can buy volume on Vita when it comes out. It's I don't think we have a specific date, but it'll be in the next couple of months. We just need to work out the exact date, but I won't mention it here because 
We I appreciate you guys it. might like yeah, it. Absolutely. Um, and then, uh, and yeah, just follow me on Twitter at Mike Bithell, uh, and I will promise I, I'm reasonably interesting on there. I think I'm okay. Oh no, you're you're great. I'm okay. You, you're I'm you're you're a quality Twitter user. Fascinating. You're, no, it's, the way it's, said that. It's, 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 it's really fascinating. fascinating. You're you're fascinating. fascinating. You, you, there, there it is. Intriguing. The you stuff can you tell with Mike. You can tell the uh, the level of your humor when you play volume, and you've got that really kind of twisted, dry sense of humor, which oh, I like so. a lot, which is good. I think I mean, it's probably the podcast. English thing, right? I think we're... It, 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 90% English is the yeah, accent, yeah, yeah. actually, truth be told. The rest of it is just... <laughs> if you had an American accent, you'd be boring as shit. That's fair. Completely boring. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I'm joking. Mike Bithell, thank you for joining us. You're welcome with us anytime. You know that. I uh, it. All right. Uh, who's... Let's see. Greg will be on next, I think, with Tim, with uh, Nina Freeman. So uh, we should skedaddle.